Hello and welcome to another episode of Golden Nuggets. Now, if you're hooked on Golden Nuggets, which I hope you are by now, you'll remember in episode 22, we had Brett Hartley Wilson, the COO of Husby, on the show. And we spoke about um, their office, which looks like Silicon Valley. They called it the garden. And we spoke about the co-founder um, and CEO of the company, the Zuckerberg of the Middle East, as I called him, Jad Antoon. He didn't like it when I called him Zuckerberg. I didn't like it at all. So I'm going to stop, <laughs> all right? But I did say that you move fast and break things. Is that fair? Would you say that's a fair representation of your leadership style? I think speed's something that we focus a lot on in, in Hospi, so you can name it however you Okay, want. what was the last thing you broke? I think we're shipping technology today at, at an incredible velocity, so now we are put features to the market every other day, so roughly every... 48 hours mm -hmm. and hopefully we think we're at, at the pace to, to ship on, on a daily basis. So that's something that we optimize for on, on speed. Okay, um, so I'm gonna ask you a question about kind of the technology side of things um, because you are fundamentally a real estate company, started as a mortgage company, transformed into a real, or you developed a real estate side. Um, what differentiates you from real estate, you know, the traditional real estate company that is tech enabled versus being a tech startup? Yeah, so just just a quick background and, and focus a bit more here on the technology aspect since it's a technology question. So initially we started in a mortgage company. Should we get the CTO here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we started as a mortgage company initially. So initially we, we provided uh, technology or a platform to brokerages in, in the market, mainly mortgage brokerages. And, and mainly the, the technology that we provide to them is either to acquire more, more leads or to streamline their operations. So everything that we do here is to make sure that they can scale their businesses without hiring a lot of headcount. And with that, we had massive success. We scaled the company um, in a very aggressive way over the past three years. Mm. Um, and I remember the agents were loving it. Like, finally, they had an app where they didn't need to speak to anyone and it was telling, giving them updates about their deals progressing effectively. That is correct. And, and now the, the technology that we give for the agents, which is the second product that we're focusing on, mm -hmm. developed a lot. Mainly today we're building it for Spain and hopefully we're br gonna bring it to the UAE in the next three to four months. But just for you guys to understand a bit more technology that we have. Uh, so in, in Spain and Europe, and this is what we're gonna roll out here, we're completely a technology company. Mm -hmm. So anyone can become an agent with us in Hospi. You can be the best agent in the market, or you can be a part-time student where you want to make uh, a bit more cash on the side. You download the app, you put your passport copy, you put your bank info so we can pay you. Um, we do KYC in 24 hours, mm -hmm. training online, you're up and running. So anyone can be an agent. I remember Brett saying that you don't need to have a license to be in Spain. Exactly. So in, in, in Europe, we, we, uh, we work under the concept of the Autonomo, which is a mm -hmm. freelancer, uh, which doesn't exist in, in this part of the world. here. Uh, we're going to operate on their visa concept, but the same mm. technology will apply to anyone here. And the technology that we have is similar basic to anything that we build on mortgages, so either to, to help you acquire more leads or to help you convert mm. more leads. So these are the two things that we focus on. But you on say, like, you, you think that there's, okay, there's 15,000 licensed agents in Dubai. Then you've got the taxi driver, the this, the, the, the hostess. Everyone kind of dabbles or knows someone. So. Is there something that you could tap into here that could, you know, the same product in Spain, could you bring it here to, more as a referral rather than acting as an agent, something more referral based? Yeah, so we try to think about Hospi as an infrastructure place. So the, 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 pro, the, the value that we give for the agents is the infrastructure, so either the contracts that we give for developers and to other agencies mm -hmm. and all of that, and two is, is the technology that we give. Personally, I don't like to give the the parallelism between the real estate sector and, and other businesses because I think the real estate agent does a lot and, mm -hmm. and when they close the, the transaction and, and etc. But fundamentally, the way people buy, sell or rent their home globally, mm -hmm. even though that people say it's very different, in reality it's not very different in, mm -hmm. in our opinion at least. So a typical transaction, you go on a portal, mm -hmm. um, the portal is more or less the same, so very optimized on search and, mm -hmm. and, and listings and, and then transaction goes uh, completely offline and mainly it's uh, either through WhatsApp with going back and forth between the buyer, the agent and the seller 
uh, but also the questions are more, more or less the same. So for example, uh, number of bedrooms, square meters, etc. Mm -hmm. In Spain, you might ask if there's an elevator in the building and in Dubai, you might ask if there's a gym in the building, right? But the fundamentals are the same. It's so it's same. search, mm -hmm. coordination on WhatsApp, the bureaucracy and then the contract mm -hmm. uh, that and goes underneath. Like, did, you, did you go through something that was like, damn, this is just ridiculous. Why am I, you know, did you go through the process yourself and see that something is broken or how, how did Husby come about? No, I, I actually did not. So I, I just love a big challenge. The mm. sector is very large, biggest asset class. Um, probably the last sector that really, where technology didn't do a big impact mm. yet. Um, Why do you think that is? So it, 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 th there's a few reasons for that. So if, if you look in general a bit how, how technology moved through the years. So in, initially technology started with verticals that we We'd, we'd like to call it high volume, lo low tickets. So mm -hmm. uh, food delivery, ride hailing, like the Ubers and the creams, e-commerce payments and, and all of that, mm -hmm. right? W with time, you, you went a bit into medium ticket and, and, and medium transactions. So for example, uh, cars mm -hmm. um, and uh, vacations and all of that. And we think that the last sector that's, that's already there is the low volume, high, high ticket. Mm -hmm. Go, going a bit, focusing a bit more on the technology that, that needs to be built in real estate is that even though that the opportunity is very large, the question in real estate is what do you build in, in that yeah. sector? Because a lot of the companies out there are either build something that in our opinion is not very scalable. Mm -hmm. uh, so meaning that technology streamlines a bit here and there the operations. So very difficult for you to go and build a large business over multiple countries and, and mm -hmm. all of that. And two, a lot of the models don't, don't have a lot of impact. So uh, either have to be balance sheet heavy mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that. So we spend a lot of time uh, thinking about what mm -hmm. needs to be built. And we think today in, in Spain, we have a differentiated model that we're gonna go and hopefully uh, move into a new market too. So and break things there. <laughs> hopefully, uh, but mainly the value proposition that we give in Europe is we're paying three times more commission to the mm -hmm. agents, so significantly higher. We're giving the best technology in Spain today, so meaning and a super app. You can do that because you've got less overheads? Because you've Exactly. Got, right. So just for you to visualize it a bit, for us to have a big market share in, in Spain, we probably need 30, 40 people on, on payroll. Okay. Uh, on that. So your, your capex and infrastructure is, is incredibly small mm -hmm. uh, compared to a typical agency um, um, that, that's a bit older, so we can deliver a lot of the value back mm. uh, to our, our stakeholders. So you're definitely tech first, then people. And that's the difference between a typical real estate company is it has the people first, they have a problem or they need to, you know, uh, something done a bit more efficiently. So let's go in and fix the CRM or let's get some tech and add it on here, plug in this, plug in that. But you're starting as technology and then the people come. For sure, mm -hmm. and, and, and today the focus a bit is uh, on the real estate side was, was mainly a bit more on, on Europe and, and specifically Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to bring the technology here in the next uh, two, two to three months. So hopefully we're gonna make a significant impact mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the UAE market as well. Okay, let's talk about money because you've raised a lot. You've secured, well, last time I checked it was $37 million funding from some big names like I mean, I was, I was a PropTech co-founder and the names of your investors, it's like, you know, if you had a wish list of, oh, who would we want to invest in our startup? You've got Fifth Wall, you've got um, Sequoia, um, VentureSook, who are the others? Yeah. <laughs> how did you get- Is there a question? How did you, yeah, <laughs> the, question, uh, the question is, how did you raise we're right, it's $37 million, right? More? That's the disclosed up, up. amount. Down, we, down? We raised significantly higher than, than $37 million, so we raised a couple of rounds after mm -hmm. that, that both of them are, are not disclosed, so mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to focus on building the company rather than putting and amounts PR and out stuff. there. Okay. And what, what was the pitch? Like, how did you convince them? What was the problem that you've pledged to solve? Yeah. So and how big is that problem? Yeah, so a answering how big is the opportunity in real estate is fairly easy, right? It's just the asset class itself um, answer the question. Th the question in, in this space is around the model rather than, than the market and, 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 and the industry. So 
if if you look a bit on on the model that we play in today, we have a model that delivers a clear value proposition for our user, and in this state, in this state, it's uh, the, either the real estate agent or the mortgage broker, which is the core of everything that we do, and the value prop for them. Uh, is is basically the same, so better technology and higher commission uh, than than anyone else. So the value prop was, was incredibly clear, and again in Europe we're a completely technology company and so forth, and mm. we're moving into this direction today in in uh, in the UAE. Uh, regarding investors themselves, they want to see something that that scales. Mm -hmm. So again, we don't need a lot of overhead and headcount for you to build a large business. And mm -hmm. two, we're playing a high margin business with low opex, mm -hmm. uh, so you can have. Um, a PNL or a profit margin that's mm -hmm. um, fairly on on the high side without sacrificing any value creation mm. uh, for your stakeholder. And and it helps that you come from an investment background rather than a real estate background. I do come from an investment background. Yes. Okay. So Tell I us about your your career path up until. Yeah. So and initially, I I studied in the US. So I actually studied in San Francisco mm -hmm. and. Uh, I took a job there, leading growth for for a technology company, and then post that I moved to Dubai and uh, I did work in investments, as as you mentioned, mainly in investments focusing on technology companies. So mm -hmm. the fund where I used to work with backed some of the large companies in in the region. Did you do uh, a bit of shark work? Like, were you the shark? Effectively, no, no okay. not not really. So we mm -hmm. we did very diligent work, both on the size of the opportunity, the product quality, and and the team behind mm -hmm. uh, the business. And these are, uh, or the fund where I used to work with is uh, about some of the large companies in, in technology in the Middle East, like mm -hmm. Kirim, Ketopi, Property Finder, mm -hmm. Fresha, and, and others. And so was it uh, you kind of working behind the scenes on that that made you think, I can do this? Like, mm -hmm. was, is that how Husby came around? You were like, this is, there's a gap here, or how, how did it come about? Exactly. So I, I, I would say part of it is, is that so venture uh, teaches you how to think big, dissect markets and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I think a big part of, of uh, what we did was or what we're doing here in Hospi is from, from my learnings and adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the US was, was a big part of, of that. So San Francisco, which is probably the city that's the most active in technology. Uh, teaches you uh, to, to dream big, a lot of the aggression, the speed that we operate that under. moving fast and breaking things uh, that I was exactly, saying about yeah, yeah. Mm. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, and this became one of the, the core things that we breathe in the company. So as you might know, we're very optimized on speed, on uh, mm. taking some risks and, and etc. And I think if you want to go and build a large business over a period of five to ten years, then you have to operate in, in that much. Mm -hmm. And how did the name come around, Husby? Yeah, so Husby, we, we wanted the uh, we wanted the name that uh, th that actually doesn't have a meaning. Mm -hmm. So we wanted the company to be so large that it becomes a verb. So okay. for example, if you say Google it today, it's mm -hmm. like search for it. Mm -hmm. So Husby today, uh, like hopefully one day you say Husby it. So yeah. Husby. Okay, so let's say I'm searching for a property. Oh, what are you up to? I'm just Huspying. Is that the kind exactly, of exactly? Yeah. Uh -huh. So th that's one of the ambition that we have. Okay. So. Hopefully, 10, 15 years from today, it becomes a, a verb. verb. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, we wanted to compete on SEOs, something that uh, is a bit more tactical and on, on the details, something that you don't have to pay millions of dollars for you to go and be able to compete on advertising with mm -hmm. the online channels. Okay. But you're like me. You couldn't get the huspy.com, could you? Initially, no, but mm -hmm. now we have huspy.com. You got it? Yeah, we got, we got <laughs> How it. How much did you have to pay? <laughs> we got to it two, two years and a half ago. Was it yeah. some guy, <laughs> some kid in Germany or something that was just sitting on this domain? Or No, actually we bought it. So we bought it from, from someone, mm -hmm. not for a large amount, but okay. initially we operated with Husby.io for four or five months. Mm -hmm. um, so this is why some of our emails are still on .io, and, mm -hmm. uh, but we're, all of our websites are either on Husby.com, which is a Dubai entity, or Husby.es. Mm -hmm which is the Spanish uh, mm -hmm. entity. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you're not the kind of, you're not really out there. This is your first podcast. You're not really the kind of PR and interview type. So I'm very honored to have you on the show. I am honored. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it took a while to get this. We were, supposed to, we were supposed to do this three months ago, but you are such a busy guy, but finally got you in a window while you're in Dubai. Um, I tell, I want to know kind of as a, as a founder, 
very successful company, work-life balance. How are you, do you even manage it? Have you just decided for the next 10 years I'm going hard on this or what's your? Yeah, so first of all, in, internally, and, and, and we don't feel the size of hospice, so we still have the same chip of, on, on our shoulder as if it's day one. So mm -hmm. uh, we're still a tiny company in my head. Before we get to four or five markets, multiple products, um, and hopefully lead the sector in Europe and the Middle East, then mm -hmm. this is probably the, the day that we say, okay, we, we have something that's working. Um, so and th it that's becomes a verb. And it becomes a verb. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's that's for sure. One, two, uh, regarding work-life balance, uh, everyone has a rhythm. Uh, I can operate with uh, long hours, little sleep, mm -hmm. without sacrificing happiness. So every time that I, I balance things out, it makes me less happy. Actually, mm -hmm. so I think for the foreseeable future, I'm very committed to to long hours, mm -hmm. high intensity speed, mm -hmm. and I actually involve it. So I love um, crafting the, the quality of the product, the distribution, mm -hmm. dissecting markets, new products, mm -hmm. and etc. So I think it's You're a lot of fun. You're obsessed with the work. I, I love it. There is that kind of pressure as like, oh, I'm a, I'm a founder now, or I'm, a, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I should be waking up at 5 a.m. or I should be very disciplined and going to the gym every day. Like, do you have these kind of obsessions with routines or like I'm trying to get into the DNA of Jad like no, my routine changes a lot so mm. I, I can focus I, I, I come to the office a bit early just because I'm, I'm in meetings the whole day and I, I, I live late sometimes I work out in the morning sometimes I wake up I work out at night sometimes I don't work out um, but for me the, the most important thing is to get five six hours of sleep mm -hmm. um, good coffee up and running mm -hmm. so that's I, your no yes. no no maybe um, in four to five years mm -hmm. I, I'll need a bit more time to what to rest <laughs> and all of that. But at this stage of my career, I think I'm good. You're, to go. you're all go. Yeah. What about like things like breath work and meditation and all of this? No, Not you. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. So, did you have any mentors or significant figures as you were either you know in your education or going through your career before you founded Husby? Yeah, so th there's a few people that, that uh, left the mark in, in my in my career business wise. So I have my my father uh, actually b built a, built a significant business from from nothing by taking a, a big risk. So moved from Lebanon to into Central Asia post uh, the USSR mm -hmm. fell down in 1997, um, and a lot of the risk and speed and aggression I think is coming from him. So mm -hmm. people say that I'm a fraction of my father. Uh, my brother is is uh, is very different. So also has a business and so on. Um, very product obsessed. Uh, likes to play a high margin business, more calculated, etc. So I took also a bit on on on, on that side. And uh, also I I, I I tell this to people is that everyone has craft their own story. So mm -hmm. with us, our DNA and and this is something that we we focus out a lot on internally, I think it became cultural. Mm. We like to play in big markets. Big mm. markets, big disruption, let's go. So th okay. this becomes very interesting. Where did you grow for up? Us. I grew up in Beirut, Lebanon. Okay. And your dad was in? Yes, my my father was in Central Asia. I used to go back and forth mm -hmm. oh, uh, so you didn't to Lebanon. Go there. I used to actually go and visit him almost every summer. Okay, all right, nice. And now you're living in half in Spain, half here, or mostly? Dubai? This year it's going to be half and half. Mm -hmm. So six months roughly in Dubai and mm -hmm. hopefully six months in Spain, dominantly Madrid. Okay. Um, I hear you live in City Walk. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in City Walk too. I was one of the first uh, residents in City Walk from 2017. Um, and then I left in to just after COVID, I left, or just before COVID. Why did you choose City Walk? I love City Walk, it's, and and for me it's it's the perfect fit. So, five minutes from the office, five minutes from the beach. Mm -hmm. It has a community where you you get some aspect of the the quality of, of Europe or mm -hmm. the the walking, getting coffee, going yeah, but around. Do people like I, I talk about City Walk, but 
I never actually see people walking around City Walk. I'm probably the only one. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, so I pick up my coffee in the morning. Yeah. I come back home, go Arabica. to the gym. Come exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's great location. So also you're very close to the IFC, very close to the office, very mm-hmm. close to the water. And yeah. And all of that. Uh, see, I kind of I, I chose City Walk originally because of the low riseness. Because I, yes. I don't have a fear of heights. I have a fear of fire. <laughs> so I thought better be on the safe side. Live in City Walk, nice, you know, maximum six floors. Um, and then you know my confidence grew the longer I've been in Dubai. And then last year I moved into Index Tower. And then last week there was a fire. <laughs> And then Five floors below me. Um, and you have no idea how painful it is to go down 50 floors of stairs, let alone go up. Going down, my calf muscles were rock. So I'm actually now strongly considering moving back into City Walk <laughs> because I can't go through that again. Yeah, the same story happened to me when I used to live in the IFC. So I used to live in Mace Tower mm-hmm. and there was a fire and I, I can feel the leg pain. Yeah, the next <laughs> but, day, but, yeah. calf muscles because it's just being <laughs> stretched and stretched. And I, I felt like the stairs were never ending. Luckily, nobody was hurt. Everything was fine. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a, a kind of reminder. Okay. Uh, career advice <clears throat> lots of people listening watching um, are either thinking about getting into real estate or just started and want to try and understand the industry as best as possible so what would your advice be to people thinking about getting in the industry and just starting their journey yeah um, first of all i have a lot of respect for real estate agent i, th- I think the optics of what it takes to be a real estate agent and, and reality are, are different. Mm. Um, typically what happens in, in the sector is people look at it from the outside and they see is that, okay, the economics are very appealing. Mm. If you close one transaction a month, which is should be fairly easy to do, you can make a lot of money and then you come in and you understand how difficult it is either to source a property or to close a client. Um, and, and this is fairly because the service is more or less the same unless mm. you are working in a niche or in, t- in a company that provides actual technology mm. and, and all of that. Uh, so one, you, you have to rely a lot on self-motivation, mm. etc. And two, which is the most important thing, you have to find a company that empowers you to grow yourself. And, and f- for us in, in Hospi, the way we'd like to think, if you're a very successful agent, uh, our job is to make you grow much mm. faster than, than if you grow on your own. And two, if you're new person entering to the market then our job is to make you productive and hopefully mm. become the future of the industry mm. um and of, of tomorrow so that's the way on, on yes. i think about and and actually interestingly we had to clear out a lot of your people from the garden to shoot this episode <laughs> and i was actually surprised to find to see how many people were actually sitting together talking to each other. It's not like a typical real estate company. Everyone's separate. They're kind of in the pods and making calls by themselves. And, you know, but it, I really felt that sense of collaboration. Um, how has the garden contributed to the performance or the productivity of your, your agents? Yeah, so the, the guard, the, we invest a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, resources in the garden, we wanted the garden to be the center of technology in the ecosystem, mm-hmm. right? So we do a lot of talks either in-house or out, our, out for the external world. So we invite a lot of people to come and spend time here. Mm-hmm. Also, if you don't work in Hospi and you want to come and work from here, you're more than welcome. Sorry, uh, did you just say free office space? Exactly. You can come, free <laughs> coffee. We've got this on, exactly. <laughs> We've got this on uh, yeah. camera now, okay. Yes, yeah, so that's one. Two, uh, I think collaboration, if done in the right way, because diversity sometimes can play a bit against you if, mm-hmm. if you don't build a homogenous team. If you manage to crack it, then, then you can build magic. So, ah, if you so let's talk about that, because then you do have, especially in, in Dubai, nationalities will club together and move around in clusters. So is that something that you've noticed here or is there a bit more diversity? Yeah, so in, in Huspi, we, we have both diversity on nationality level, but also on a background level. So we have a lot of people that come from the industry, so either people who work in real estate and mortgages and et cetera, uh, and, but also people who come from a technology background, so software engineers, 
product managers, product designers, mm. uh, data engineers, and, and etc. Which you wouldn't mix with if you were in a typical real estate company. Exactly. Mm. So the challenge initially was, was a bit more complex. That's why uh, what we do in the company is we have a, an incredibly solid onboarding process that we focus a lot on. But also as a person who works in, in the company, you're both incentivized on the v individual level and also on a company level, mm -hmm. either by uh, a stock compensation. So majority of people are owners in, in hospice. So we all work uh, mm -hmm. into a common goal and, and therefore the ship sails in a bit of a, of a smoother way. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So want to know from you, what's next for Haspi? Yeah, so in, in, the, in the short term, we're focusing mainly on our real estate business units, uh, mainly in, in, in Dubai and in, in Spain. So Dubai, we're, we're growing massively. So we launched the new business six, seven months ago. We're hiring aggressively. We're going to bring the best technology, in our opinion, in this sector. And hopefully this going to generate a platform where people can come to either enter the market or grow their business exponentially with us over the next period of of time. In Spain, we're today in Madrid. We're going to launch four or five new cities this mm -hmm. year. Uh, so hopefully the likes Can of... You, which ones? Hopefully the likes of... Uh, we're focusing initially on, on tier two cities in, in Spain, mainly the likes of Malaga, uh, Valencia, mm -hmm. Getafe. And at the end, we're going to close with Barcelona, okay. which is the second largest city in, in, in Spain. Um, and hopefully post we finish both, so both focusing on the UAE mm -hmm. and on, on Spain, then the goal is to launch two new mar markets. One of them is going to be in the Middle East and one of them is going to be in Europe. So hopefully we'll close with four markets sometimes by, sometime by the end of the year. Mm. Did you learn Spanish yet? I've been taking courses for four months, so I'm halfway there. You can get by in a restaurant Yes, perhaps. exactly. <laughs> so I, I speak French, so French is very close to to Spanish, mm -hmm. so I, I can understand 70-80% of, of what's out there and maybe I can speak 30-40%. Okay, but we're fully committed for Spain and hopefully mm -hmm. teaching or learning English is, uh, mm -hmm. is one additional point to show our commitment. Mm -hmm. So you were recently featured in Gulf Business as one of the most influential real estate players in the GCC, or real estate leaders in the GCC, hence you're on the Golden Nuggets leaders season. <laughs> um, I'm sure you're equally proud to be on both. Tell us how that came about. Yeah, so uh, first of all, we're, we're very grateful to, 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 to be on, on the list and we feel very privileged. Uh, but I, I think a, bit, a big part of it is, is the reflection of the success of the company and the success of the team. Uh, so uh, as you know, we're, we're still fairly a new company, so we're three years and a half old. Mm -hmm. Some people think we're 10 years old, we're mm -hmm. just above three years. Um, and today in, in the UAE, specifically on mortgages, we roughly have 25% of the residential markets. So one out of three to four mortgages we facilitate today in Hospice. So we have mm. significant size o over there and, and all other business units that we launch, either the real estate business in the UAE or our businesses in Spain are growing at a rapid rate. So roughly mm. we're growing 10 to 15% week on week. Mm. So roughly the business is give or take doubling um, every single month. but. Uh, I play a role in the company. It's a reflection of a hard work of 250 people mm. uh, putting their heart and soul for, for the mm -hmm. company. And so you, you started in 2020, so after COVID, where the market's kind of, you know, reasonable to say that it's just been going up and up and up. Yes. Um, how ready are you for the eventual down, down, down? Yeah, so I, I think we're, we're, we're the most ready whenever, so as, as you know, it's cyclical, right? So today in Dubai, we have a bull run in Europe, maybe the markets are, are a bit calmer. The, the, the great thing when you have a technology company is you, you don't sit on overhead, right? So our, our costs are much lower than any, any typical agency or mortgage company. So again, in Spain, we think we need 30, 40 people for you to go and, and, and build a business over there. So even if the market crunch and bear in mind that the market size is very large and we have a differentiated offering that we still think that we can build a massively profitable business given that we don't have a massive cost structure on, on the business. Okay. And what's your view on the future of the prop tech industry? Because that's, that's a word we haven't said yet. And you're, you know, you've, you've probably raised one of the biggest prop tech rounds in the region. Um, 
So let's talk about prop tech. What's your vision? What's your your predictions for the future of the prop tech industry? Yeah. So we're, we're today we're probably the, the leading prop tech company or one of the leading prop tech companies in, in the Middle East and Europe also in, in terms of size and, and, and distribution. Um, I think the size of the opportunity is too big that you're going to see more venture dollars going in and more companies coming in, specifically if you have a model that comes out of winners. So uh, we expect in, in, in Hospi to get competition in, in the business that we do either on the mortgage side or the real estate side or any business unit that we're going to go in the future, but the market's so big uh, that there's, there's enough to go around. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the advantage that we have maybe a bit is we're well capitalized as a company. We have a differentiated product and we've been in the industry for a while. So we had a lot of learnings, ups, downs um, and successes and failures. So mm -hmm. we have that advantage. Uh, and the last big one for me that you cannot put or quantify it is the culture of speed that, that we have, I think this is a massive advantage that we have today in company. See, I told you, moving fast and breaking things. E exactly. <laughs> That's your stuff. Exactly. Okay. Now, I've kind of developed quite a tradition now with all my um, guests where I, my company is, um, my mission is to make people or help people get started, get noticed, get results and get referred. That's my kind of four um, missions. So I want to get your words of wisdom for each of those. Don't worry, I'll repeat it for you. So um, words of wisdom or your golden nuggets for someone who wants to get started in the real estate industry. Self-motivation. Okay. And yeah. get noticed. I think you need to find a company or a platform that gives you the tools for, for you to do that. And this is a combination of technology marketing but a clear path for you to grow inside the company okay getting results i think on getting results my answer will be the same as what i just mentioned on, on the second point mm -hmm. so a company that provides you with all the tools for you to be able to mm -hmm. succeed and getting referred so this is a bit more touchy-feely how as a an agent you can get referred yeah, so the, the thesis that we have in the company in, in, in Hospi is we, we want to have the real estate agent and the mortgage broker at the center of, of the transaction. Uh, and, and why we think so is at the end of the day, the, the agent to a large extent is the brand themselves. Mm. So when you provide a good service, by, by function you get a referral. And, and the way we think about the building the company is you, you are the brand, but behind you there's a big infrastructure mm. that can help you move the, the needle. Mm. And not to go again the same words, which is the technology, the network, okay. yeah, and, and the tools for you to be able uh, to succeed. And hopefully if you come and, and join Hospi, then if you're getting a lot of referrals, then ideally we want you to make exponentially more referrals mm. uh, just by function of you mm. and working with us. That's a really good point, actually, because uh, you've touched on there's so many people, let's say from the consumer's angle that's buying or renting, they come across so many people throughout the journey, from anywhere from the agent to the removals guy, to the, I don't know, the person at the deal account or whatever it may be. So many people in that process. But the only ones you really remember, whether they're good or bad, was the mortgage um, representative or the agent? 100%. I, even if, if you look at it from a simple aspect, if you get one of your friends who are moving to Dubai and they tell you, hey, Sylvia, I want to rent a house or buy a house, mm -hmm. you would send them on WhatsApp the name of the agent, yeah. not, the, not the name of the agency. So it starts with, with the basics. Mm -hmm. That's why a core thesis that we have in, in the mm -hmm. company is to empower the real estate agent and, and the mortgage broker mm -hmm. by making more money with higher commissions and, and better technology. All right. Well, that's a wrap from The Garden, from Haspi, and with Jad. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you, Jad. Thank you, Sylvia. Really enjoyed being here. Uh, the exclusive <laughs> on podcast episode with Jad. <laughs> Done. Thank you. Done. Thank you.